everyone. My name is Jonathan Bear. I'm an astrologer and today I'm going to talk to you about uh, coming into the age of Aquarius. So the whole, the whole concept of coming into the age of Aquarius, ascension, uh, you know, that kind of idea, I feel has been largely misunderstood, you know. Especially around uh, 2012, December 21st, you know, uh, we had this notion that like everything was just magically going to change. There was going to be this one moment where everything just shifts over. But, you know, it's actually a very long, drawn out process. Um, I... I was, to be honest, disappointed at uh, December 21st, 2012. I thought, I, you know, I was fooled too by the hype of the media and everything like that, that some instant gratification was going to come out of it. And that obviously was not the case. So I'm grateful for it nonetheless. I'm grateful for being fooled by it. Uh, it's taught me a lot. It's taught me that I was a part of um, a part of the let's use the word propaganda here I, I don't really find it's fitting but you know I uh, I spoke about you know a collapse and different things like that meanwhile I was always saying about like this is great for us because, you know, uh, we will be freed and, and uh, we'll rise above um, our structures. Uh, and so it's actually taught me a lot about fear and hope. And basically, I use those two ideas to uh, get to the truth, you know, like... Uh, Neptune and Pisces it's uh, it's uh, very very illusion deceiving um, dreamy kind of days right now we don't know what's true what's not uh, false news what not you know it's all in our faces and and it's hard for us to know what what to think um, so anyhow, you know, like after the December 21st, 2012, I basically had it in my head that there is a seven year window and by the, by the year 2020, uh, humanity will gain, gain clarity, will gain 2020 vision. I never, I was just getting into astrology back then, so I never had any astrological evidence or anything to base this concept on I just that's what I felt maybe it was part of the whole seven years of uh, trials and tribulations that the Bible preaches or whatnot that influenced this, this thought um, but nonetheless you know I've kind of looked into that concept and in the year 2020, you know, I kind of feel like I do have some proof of, of a shift. But uh, to clarify, there is not going to be any kind of instant gratification. Um, just to point out even, you know, the constellations in the sky, they slightly overlap each other. So there is no moment, you know. Uh, there's a, a period where we're kind of hovering uh, between the, the two Pisces and Aquarius where we're we're still in Pisces but we're also kind of in Aquarius you know uh, so that's an interesting thought but you know um, at the end of this year Saturn moves into his own sign of uh, Capricorn Saturn's about structure his signs about structure and to me, things are going to get solid, you know, but we're in a time right now of choosing hope or fear. Uh, we got all this North Korea talk and whatnot. 
Um, which doesn't help us manifest anything positive. Uh, it doesn't lead us to hope, you know. It actually uh, continues the locking your doors, barring your windows, prepping for an apocalypse kind of mentality, which doesn't really get us anywhere except for manifesting that kind of... the, the Raising the likelihood of man manifesting that kind of um, reality. So, you know, that's something that I encourage... Uh, I encourage us to be aware of what's going on in the world, but to not fall um, victim to it, you know, to continue in in uh, a direction of hope, you know. Uh, I'm not saying to put yourself in any kind of situation uh, to leave you vulnerable to harm or whatnot, but, you know, there's a lot to, to say with... Uh, with keeping your head up, staying positive, and keeping uh, hope as your the direction on your compass. So, like I was saying, you know, uh, Saturn moves into Capricorn at the end of this year. He's there basically for three years, uh, which brings us to the year 2020. But in the year 2020, he dances in and out of Aquarius. So he'll do a short visit into Aquarius, which is an airy, light, uh, communal uh, constellation sign. Uh, and then he'll go back into that structurally uh, sound kind of Capricorn energy. So whether we see it, this 2020 vision concept, or we feel it, that will be the energy of 2020 um is that the moment we move into aquarius once 2020 is over and saturn moves into aquarius and stays there who knows but then again you know in pluto is still in capricorn and pluto in the year uh 2024 moves out of capricorn and into aquarius Pluto is about transformation. So, the other thing that I wanted to mention about 2024 is we just passed the Great American Eclipse. And there's another eclipse in 2024 that crosses in an opposite direction of the last eclipse, which forms an X on, on America between the two paths of these eclipses. And that's a seven-year window. So here we have yet another seven-year window. So, you know, what does that mean? Is that, is that the uh, shifting point? Then again, you know, I was recently looking at, uh, you know, Pluto, sorry, does go back into Capricorn and exits Capricorn finally uh, in 2025. In the year 2025, there is something extremely interesting going on. In August, August 20th of 2025, uh, here, let me uh, look at the exact, exact configuration on what's going on. But we have all the slowest moving planets all sitting at one degree, squaring or trining each other in the sky between the signs of Gemini, Aquarius, and um, uh, Gemini, Aquarius, and Aries. So let me just get to that date here.
can't recall if it was August or September, uh, July or August, sorry. It is, oops. There we go. August 20th, 2025, we have Pluto at one degree Aquarius, we, uh, who's trining Uranus at one degree Gemini. Now, Gemini is about communication and Aquarius is about community. Uh, but these are also two signs that kind of rule technology. So there may be some kind of technological um, advancement that takes place there. Uh, but definitely there's kind of, uh, you know, uh, communication with community happening. But in the sign of Aries, also at one degree, is Neptune. And Saturn is at zero degrees of Aries, uh, conjunct Neptune. And th these are both sextiling Pluto and Uranus. Man, I haven't even, uh, I barely even started analyzing this, uh, this configuration. But man, these, you know, Jupiter, it, his years, uh, he's a 12 year uh, cycle. He's, he is in the, uh, in the group of the slow moving planets, but he is the fastest of the slowest moving planets. This basically Saturn, Neptune, Uranus, and Pluto, these guys move very slow in the sky. They have long cycles and for them to all be in at one degree in this kind of configuration is is mind-blowing and not to mention so they'll hover at because they're slow they'll hover at this for you know uh, a few weeks I'm sure but um, two days after the 20th the 22nd is is a new moon um, and so, you know, the moons conjunct the sun in, in Virgo, where, you know, detail oriented, uh, cleaning up, um, you know, uh, separating, uh, what is good from what isn't, uh, you know, and this is all happening just before the new moon and continuing its process while the new moon is uh, is um, you know transpiring and so you know I don't know but that might even be the shifting moment but like I said you know it's really hard to say uh, what kind of shift and how uh, in our faces it is you know I personally don't think that there, there will be any kind of gratifying uh, moment um, but then again you know you never know throughout history there's been all kinds of uh, all kinds of transformations in uh, our uh, society our culture and um, you know to the oppressed there has been gratifying moments so is this still yet to come we'll see when we get there and uh you know by then i'll be uh speaking a lot more confidently about about this whole uh, process so uh yeah thank you very much for joining me i hope uh this talk was informative 
and uh, I'll be back uh, to speak with you again soon.